Hey, Brett Jones with FMS here. We just got done recording a webinar on T-Spine Mobility 101, and there were some key points that came out of that webinar that we wanted to highlight, throw out to a larger audience, so to speak, uh, just because they're so important to uh, being able to very uh, effectively increase T-Spine or thoracic mobility. And then we are talking about the thorax and the T-Spine. And when we include the thorax in the conversation, we start including so many other areas. We're talking about how uh, the breathing musculature works with this T-spine and thoracic area. The abdominal musculature connects in here. A lot of other prime movers, how the shoulders via the SC joints and the scapular thoracic articulations float and work on this thoracic area. So we might have called it T-spine mobility, but we're really talking about this thorax and how all of these things interrelate. And we are going to get very specific on some of our T-spine or thoracic mobility drills. Why is this important? We use the thoracic or thorax mobility in a lot of different ways. It's part of our spinal engine or how we produce gait. So whether we're talking about walking, running, uh, throwing a ball, throwing a kick, uh, power production for something like golf, uh, there's uh, so uh, many areas where we use this thoracic mobility we generate energy from the ground, we move it through a solid midsection, we use that coiled T-spine or thorax to move energy through the body to our targets. So it's a really key area for mobility for everything from walking to power production. So being effective in increasing thoracic mobility or T-spine mobility is really key. And the things that really came out of the webinar that we wanted to highlight were these keys to getting set up for some of your basic T-spine or thoracic mobility drills. The setup is everything. I tell my clients all the time, the devil's in the details, but so are the benefits. So we really want to get precise on how we're getting set up here. Key point number one, get stacked on the ribs. Not trapped on the arm. The arm's going to be free, but you're stacked on those ribs. If I was looking at you from the top, it would look like you're laying up against a wall, but there's no wall there. So we want you stacked at the ribs. We want you stacked at the hips. We, want that, we don't want that pelvis twisted. We want those hips stacked. We want the neck neutral. So we're going to use enough bolster or pillow to make sure that once you begin your rotation, the neck stays neutral. Enough bolster to make you neutral in sideline is going to jack you into flexion as you begin your rotation. So we're going to adjust the amount of bolster or pillow that we use to keep a neutral neck so that it's neutral in rotation, not stacked in sideline. We can bring something in to block the lower back. Now that could be a foam roller, it could be a chair, a doorway, large pet, small child, whatever you happen to have access to, we're going to set something at the top of the pelvis, but below the floating ribs to make sure you're not turning from your lumbar spine. One of the things that I see happen a lot when people begin their T-spine mobility or thoracic mobility drills, they bring a lot of muscle to it. They get tight and they try to turn. Well, that kind of blocks up the T-spine make sure you're going to turn more from the TL junction or the lumbar spine. So by bringing in a foam roller or a chair or a doorway at the top of the pelvis, but below the floating ribs is going to let us block that lumbar spine and make sure that the rotation we're seeing is spiraling above that point, not down into the lumbar spine. And one of the biggest things we want to focus on, especially for the two drills we're going to talk about here in just a minute is using our breath making sure that we're using good, deep, nasal, diaphragmatic breaths, that you're going to feel like move you out of your rotation, but then on the exhale, allow you to turn further. This is going to prevent you from bringing too much muscle to your T-spine rotation. We're going to use those uh, muscles of respiration to actually help mobilize the T-spine and thoracic area and be much more effective in improving thoracic mobility. So the setup is key. I'll spend five minutes getting somebody in the right setup position so that I can get 10 good diaphragmatic breaths and rotations out of them in the two drills that we're about to talk about. So we're going to make sure you're stacked on the ribs like you're laying up against a wall. Stacked at the hips, you're going to see us bring a foam roller in to bring the knee up on, make sure those hips are stacked. We're going to use enough bolster to make sure the neck is neutral, Block the lower back if needed with a foam roller, chair, doorway, something like that. And we're going to focus on using the breath. So what does this look like in action? Here's our classic rib grab thoracic mobility drill. Uh, now, 
Kyle's in mis mid action here. This is a still shot of him in rotation. So here in a second, I'm going to start the video and we're going to talk about how you can see he's stacked. We're stacked on the ribs. We're stacked at the hips. The knee is on the foam roller well above 90 degrees, very close to the chest. Bottom hand stabilizes, top hand comes across the chest, and now you see him using his breath. Just enough bolster to keep that neck neutral, make sure we're not hanging on that cervical spine and the neck can relax. <sighs> nice inhale, nice exhale. Uh, being set up in the right position is key. Nice straight line from the ankle to the ear as far as that down leg is concerned and returning to the start position there. Uh, this is a great breath assisted drill where the details are key. Where do we go from here? The bretzel. Now this was done to me. I didn't name this exercise after myself. Gray felt it was very amusing to combine a bret and a pretzel and hence the bretzel. Um, I would be up for renaming this if anybody has a suggestion. Anyway, so again, we've got an action shot here. He's in rotation. So here in a second, what does that look like from the start? Just like the rib grab. We're stacked on the ribs. We're stacked at the hips. Now, notice we're grabbing that bottom foot in a quad stretch position, but Kyle returns to the stacked position before beginning his rotation. That is key. Also key, you may actually have a shorter arm or a, a long leg or whatever the case may be, short leg, and, and you have to use a strap in order to grab that lower leg to maintain the neutral spine so that you don't get side bent in the effort to grab that bottom foot. So we're, we're following all the same details from the rib grab. The rib grab I always do first because it's our T-spine or thoracic rotation in isolation. Now in the bretzel, we challenge that thoracic rotation with the opposite side anterior chain. But the setup is key. Stacked at the ribs, stacked at the hips, neutral neck. Make sure that if you're grabbing that bottom foot, you're not having to side bend. You may have to bring a strap into play to make sure that you can be nice and neutral before you begin your rotation. So in conclusion, as I said, the devil's in the detail, but so are the benefits. You got to be precise on this. I said it earlier, I'll spend five minutes getting you in the right position so that I can get 10 good diaphragmatic breaths out of you in something like a rib grab. The setup is key. Stacked at the ribs, stacked at the hips, like you're laying up against a wall. Neck is neutral. Make sure they're not using muscle and turning from the lumbar spine. Use your breath. The breathing in this, these two drills in particular is critical. The way the breathing works with thoracic mobility is a key aspect of improving it more efficiently. But having said that, have some patience. The person you're working with may not have earned this T-spine mobility or thoracic mobility that they have overnight. So you may have to spend some time, a lot of breathing, a lot of patience in improving this T-spine mobility and just have the patience to get them in the proper setup position and make sure that you're doing this rotation spiraling up through the T-spine, not rotating down through the lumbar spine. So that's it. Check out the webinar for more details on thoracic mobility and uh, best of luck in improving your client's thoracic mobility. Hey guys, if you like the video, definitely hit the thumbs up. And if you want to stay informed, hit the bell so we can notify you anytime we put up new videos. And of course, any questions or comments, put those at the end. We'll certainly be checking them out and trying to respond. Thanks so much, and remember, always move well and then move often.